Hey, let me tell you something about American culture. American culture is strongly influenced by advertisements. They change the way we think and the way we speak. In other words, English fluency is affected by advertisements. In the 1970s, there was a popular advertisement for Life Cereal. And in the advertisement was a young man. His name was Mikey. And Mikey, ooh -wee! Mikey loved some food. Mikey would eat anything. And that became a coined phrase. Mikey will eat anything. Now fast forward to 2020. I use this phrase even now. This phrase is so popular that even in 2020, people around America use it. So for example, when my family gathers together and we're eating a good meal, if one of us can't finish the food on our plates, we say, hey, don't worry, Mikey will eat anything. And we're speaking about my dad because my dad loves food. But you see the power of an advertisement. It came out in the 1970s, but we're still using the phrases now. That's why I created today's lesson. I want to help you understand how powerful advertisements are to help you improve your English and speak like a native English speaker. So today I'm going to teach you English vocabulary words related to advertisements. I'm going to teach you English expressions related to advertisements. I'm going to show you how to organize your thoughts using the five W's to speak about advertisements. I'm going to talk about a real life situation where you can see the terms and expressions being used. And I'm going to give you a three step plan to help you apply what you learn in today's lesson. When I say today's lesson is going to change your life. Oh yeah, I am not lying. Now, before we start the lesson though, I need you to do something for me. You know that my goal is to help 1 billion students around the world speak English with confidence. And in order to do that, I need these video lessons to spread. So I need you to do three things. I need you to like, share, and subscribe. One more time, like, share, subscribe. Come on. I said like, share, subscribe. Last time, like, share, subscribe. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So for today's lesson, we have five specific sections, English vocabulary, English expressions, thought organization, real life situation, and a three part study plan. Now, remember, I'm going to explain everything to you in each section. And if you want to get the PDF that goes along with this lesson, remember, join the Academy. The link is in the description. All right. So let's get started with the first section. Here we go. English vocabulary. Now this first one is consumer real quick after me consumer. Nice. Last time consumer. Excellent. Now a consumer is a person who purchases goods and services for personal use. So we are all consumers. Now let's look at some example sentences. Here we go. She appeared to be just a happy American consumer out shopping at a big box store. Oh, real quick, big box store. So a big box store refers to a store where you can buy things in bulk. For example, in America, Costco is a big box store. So maybe I want to purchase, um, let's see, say lotion, but I don't need one bottle. I need 10 bottles. Well, that will equal a big box. So Costco would sell that box, a big box store. All right. So our next example sentence is right here. The new prices will affect all consumers. And finally, they conducted a poll in order to see what consumers were thinking. So again, after me, consumer. Very good. This is related to advertisements because consumers actually purchase products, right? Okay. Now our next vocabulary word is advert. All right. So after me, advert. Great job again, advert. Excellent. Now an advert is simply a public promotion of some product 
or service. Now, you may notice it's basically the shortened form of the word advertisement. You caught that, right? So we say advert. Now, let's see some example sentences. Here we go. The advert was posted all around the city. Next, she put an advert in the paper to see her oven, her oven, but no one contacted her. All right, and last, their latest advert features a famous actor. So again, advert, just referring to an advertisement. Now, what about the third vocabulary word related to, what are we talking about? That's right, advertisements. Here we go. The third one is billboard. Again, after me, billboard. Good, last time, billboard. Good, make sure you get your, your tongue kind of lifting up for the L, billboard. Excellent job. Now, a billboard is a large outdoor posters that advertise products. You often see these on top of large city buildings or on the side of the motorway. So here's an example sentence. Did you see the new Broadway theater billboards? Good. Advertising billboards were very expensive in the past. And finally, they unveiled a new billboard on Fifth Avenue. Now, billboards, like the sentence said, were very popular in the past. And even though we still have them today, they're not as popular as they used to be because now we have social media, we have the internet. So companies are advertising in different ways, but billboards are still popular, all right? So now let's see the next section. Again, expanding our understanding of advertisements. Now this expression is also very useful. This expression is consumer research. After me, consumer research. Good, last time, consumer research. Very good, now you already know what a consumer is. Now we're seeing this expression, consumer research. So, consumer research refers to marketing research that yields or produces or gives information about the motives and needs of different classes of consumers. So for example, Consumer research showed that many people were still not interested in the product. So you conduct consumer research when you're trying to figure out, ooh, what do they like? What don't they like? Consumer research, all right? Now, the next expression is right here. This one is product placement, all right? So after me, product placement, very good. All right, so this is when companies make arrangements with shows or events to have their product included in that particular media to help promote their product further. So look at this right below me. You see it right here, this drawing? Now, you see that there's a man and a woman, right? And they look like they're typing on a computer. But what sign do you see? That's right, you see the Apple logo. So in a movie, if there's a, a, a company that, uh, well, let's say Apple, they want to advertise Apple computers. Well, they wanna pick a very good movie and they just put their computer in one of the scenes, right? So product placement, and they pay a lot of money to do that, right? So let's see an example sentence, here we go. Some examples of product placement are very subtle. Subtle means not obvious. Again, subtle. Good, that B is silent. Subtle. Good, and again, meaning not obvious. All right, so the next one is brand slogan. Again, brand slogan. Now, this one is a special saying made from a few words that helps identify the company or brand. Now, you see right below me, right? You see the Nike swoosh? Just do it. So again, uh, you guys may not know this, but Nike is my favorite brand. I love Nike clothing. I love all of their uh, products. So I know their brand slogan very well. Just do it. But that's a very popular slogan, a brand slogan. So here's the sentence. One of the most famous brand slogans is just do it. All right. So now we have three expressions. We have consumer research. We have product placement, and we have brand slogan.
All right, now how do we put these together with the vocabulary words in order to not only understand advertising, but also know how to speak about advertisements like a native English speaker. So here we go. All right, so use the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. All right, so who, consumers, what, brand slogan and product placement, when I chose all year round, where adverts and billboards, why consumer research. So you notice that I used the vocabulary and the expressions that we've learned so far in our lesson. So how would I talk about advertising? Here we go. There are millions of consumers living in America. So large corporations try to think of the best product placements that will showcase their brand slogans. As a result of consumer research, which is done all year round, many companies decide to show their products in adverts and on billboards. So you see what happened, right? We learned six, right? We learned three vocabulary words and three expressions. And I was able to use those in order to organize my thoughts and speak about advertising. Now, as you study, right, we're going to look at another real life situation, but as you study, you may need help doing this. You may need help from a teacher to see, ah, is, is my answer right? Am I organizing my thoughts properly? That's where today's sponsor will come in handy. Cambly is sponsoring today's video and I'm so happy to partner with them. Cambly is an awesome company and they provide tutors for students learning English. They have tutors from Australia, America, Canada, and more. They're an awesome company and they even recently added courses. That's right. If you're studying for a test or you need help specifically with English fluency, or even if you need help with certain aspects of learning English, Cambly can help you. So Cambly, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Guys, you can click the link in the description and you can use the coupon code. Cambly is so awesome. They want to help my students. That's right. You to improve your English by giving you a coupon code and helping you reach all of your goals. So Cambly, thank you so much. And guys, remember sign up with Cambly so that you can practice what I am teaching you. All right. So now let's see a real life situation. All right, so here we have this baseball field. Now in America, baseball is very, very popular. Ah, I got a real quick story for you guys. So you know that I lived in Korea, right, for 10 years. And I was never a big baseball fan. Like basketball and soccer, those are the sports I like. But when I went to Korea, I heard about how good the baseball games were. So I was confused, like, what's so good about a baseball game? You know, you're hitting a ball and it's kind of quiet. You know, it's kind of a slow game. Woo but that was not the case with Korean baseball games. So at a Korean baseball game, it's not just about the players or the athletes on the field. No, in the stands during the game and even during the breaks throughout the game, they have people dancing. They have people clapping, doing different songs. When I say it was exciting, oh man. So I enjoyed going to baseball games in Korea. Now, what about this situation right here? Again, we're talking about advertisements. How can it apply or how can the idea of advertisements apply to this situation? Well, think about it. Number one, the consumers, the fans consume products, right? What about this? Number two, advert public promotion of various businesses. You can see right on the billboards, you see bank of America, a popular bank in America. You see Ford, you know, a popular truck company. Then you see AT&T. Actually, that's who I have my cell phone with. So you see promotion, you see adverts that are being displayed at this game. Now, what about number three? Billboards, right? Huge billboards in the stands. When you go to a baseball game, you will see billboards everywhere. Why? Because they have so many consumers in the stands. And let's see, number four, what about consumer research. You see fans of baseball, right? So research was done on the consumers that go to baseball games. They realized that, oh, they need banks. Bank of America bought a billboard. They need trucks. Ford bought a billboard. 
they need cell phones. So AT&T bought a billboard. So you can see how all of these words and expressions can be seen in this situation. Well, what about product placement? We see a lot of billboards, but you'll notice that they're actually placed in strategic areas. So you see this one right here. Oh, I'm gonna see if you can look at it over there in the corner, right? That says Toyota, another car company, but it's placed right below the consumers on one side so that the consumers on the opposite side can see it clearly. All right. Product placement is important. And what about this one? Number six brand slogan right here on Ford. I know it's a little tiny for you guys, but it says go further. That is one of Ford's brand slogans, go further. So everything can be seen in this real life situation. So it's so important for you to understand the words and the expressions because you'll see them all around you. All right. Now I want to give you a plan. So you kind of get frustrated, right? It's hard to understand real English. Think about it. I told you the story in the beginning about Mikey, right? Now, if you had never heard that story and never knew about the advertisement from the 1970s, you would have never understood Mikey likes to eat. Mikey will eat anything. You probably would have asked me, teacher, your, your dad's name is not Mikey. Why are you calling him Mikey? But once you understand the advertisement and the slogans and phrases used in it, you can understand English better. So let me give you three steps to improve your understanding of English advertisements and American advertisements. So the solution is to start paying attention to advertisements and commercials. Step one, pick one category to focus on. There are many types of advertisements, the medicine, food, design, the list goes on. There are commercials for all categories. Next, find three advertisements related to the category. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on television. You can find them anywhere. And finally, write down common phrases, phrases you don't know. And I suggest that you do this in a specific notebook. All right. Think about it. When we watched that commercial, right? When that advertisement came out, Mikey will eat anything. It's stuck. So when you watch an advertisement, write down those phrases that you seem to hear over and over again, or that seem to be very important. That's how you will improve your English fluency using advertisements. I know it's a shocker, right? So if you enjoyed this lesson, I know you're going to really enjoy part two, improve your English even more. So in part two, I'll give you the PDF file that goes along with this lesson. I'll give you some examples of American advertisements. I just mentioned life cereal, but I'll show you some other specific examples, which is going to help you understand Americans even more. Then I'll talk about American culture just a little bit more. I just told you about life cereal, but I'll give you some more information. And finally, a practical application. So I'll give you a PDF that will help you actually put into practice what I taught you today. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, if you want to be a part of my academy and see part two, all you have to do is go to this link right here on the screen and also click the link in the description. Don't forget also to sign up with Cambly in order to improve your English and to practice what you learned. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to study English. You ready? You know, I didn't forget. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right, guys. Today we have a very touching story. So you know that I love my family a lot. And I may have told some of you this story, but I want to tell it to the rest of you. So every Saturday, I actually teach a Bible class. I teach it on Facebook. It's public. So you guys can actually join if you'd like. Every Saturday at 9.45 a.m. on Saturday mornings, I teach a Bible class. And... I have to get up really early on Saturday mornings in order to prepare for the Bible classes because during the week I'm working for you guys. So one morning, uh, this, this weekend, it was on a Saturday morning. I woke up around 4 AM because I had to prepare for class and my nieces just happened to be staying with us. So my nieces were in the room directly across from mine. 
So I was sitting in my room, my home office, and I was working on the presentation and I heard a tap at the door. I said, wait a minute. Now I woke up at 4 a.m., but around 5.15, 5.30, I heard this tap at the door. Now my nieces are three and 10 years old. So I heard a tap at the door and I said, you've got to be kidding me. Then I heard the door slowly open and I looked down and I saw these little eyes and my three-year-old niece walked into my room. She said, TT, that's what she calls me. Are you awake? <laughs> I said, yes, baby, I'm awake. So she came in. I said, now TT is working though. I'm trying to create something. I'm trying to prepare for a Bible class. You can stay in here though. She said, okay. I said, do you want to draw? She said, yes, I'd like to draw. So I gave her paper and markers and pencils. And while I created the presentation for the Bible class, she laid behind me on the floor and drew and colored for about an hour or two. Now I was busy, but when she came in, I felt this sense of love come over me because, you know, children really make you happy. And I could tell she just wanted to be around her aunt. And, you know, sometimes in life, you know, we get really busy as adults and we forget that the small things really bring us joy. So that moment right there really made me happy. I love my nieces to death. I would give them anything, anything they need, I'll give to them. But those moments, those, those special moments, like coming into my room at 5.30 in the morning are the moments I will remember for a lifetime. So I hope you guys have experienced these, these moments where someone that you love has surprised you and, and maybe helped you to feel special. Let me know in the comment section. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Remember to keep studying English.